Hey everyone, it's Eggman from Scope of Life and Beyond Systems. Today, finally, we start with the first exercise of the How to Stabilize Joints Stabilize Movement series. If you haven't checked out the previous videos, just jump to my channel and check them out because there is always a little bit more information if you watch a couple of videos that have to do with the same uh, sort of same uh, theme. So it really deepens your understanding of the whole thing. Now, what we'll do today, we do an exercise out of this category where it's really about doing very primal, very fundamental movements because those are the ones that combine a strengthening aspect with a coordinational aspect and that in a very fundamental sense. What does this mean? Now, basically, when you look at a baby, a baby starts his or her own movement journey by doing or learning very, very fundamental patterns that a baby is never shown by an adult. So long before a baby actually starts to copy movement patterns from adults, it literally has to learn the prime coordination and the prime strength aspects in order to be even able to stabilize him or herself at the level that copying an adult is even possible. Like for instance, a baby can't instantly walk, at least a human baby can't instantly walk. So what is the first stage that's necessary? You need to learn the core stability and also train your muscles, functionally train your muscles in such a way that eventually you're able to kneel, to crawl, to stand up and then to walk. Before that, you can't even begin to copy those movement patterns from your parents. So this has a couple of very, very interesting things to it. First of all, because we are starting with a movement that's so foundational, we literally jump before the point where different sorts of specific patterns that you might have copied from your parents that might not be that ideal because to be honest who works with a perfectly well-balanced body structure or who actually moves in a perfect way almost no one or literally no one so whatever we copy eventually in our early developmental years is already a little bit distorted now the patterns that we are starting to use right now they are actually from a time where it's really about developing the very core aspects of movement. How to stabilize your pelvis, how to stabilize the main tractions in your body, like the main functional lines in your body, the main axis in your body. And by doing so, you literally retrain your system at the stage where no, uh, none of, of all the copies, none of all the, the imprints that you took on later on and that you based your movement on actually have an effect so far. And that's amazing because this literally resets yourself and has an influence on everything that you do in your movement. So the first thing that we do today is quite simple. It is rolling on the floor. Because this is something that's one of the main and first things that a baby actually learns if the parents let it. Meaning, some parents, if they see that their baby wants to turn from one side to the other, they instantly start and help the baby. Now, eventually, of course, you, you might help the baby, but it's also important to give it some time and to allow that baby to actually develop movement and the strength to perform those movements on its own. So definitely not talking about let your baby just lie there until it figures everything out by its own, but leave some time for this personal exploration of your child as well. That's very important. And that's what we do right now. First exercise, lie flat down on the ground on your back and without the help of your feet and without the help of your hands or arms, turn to the belly 
and then turn to the back again, turn to the belly, turn to the back again. Sounds easy, for some people it is, and for some people it's the most difficult exercise you can possibly give them. So, thing, so much um, for now, let's just jump right into it and uh, see how this exercise looks like. I'll do one very basic version for this video since I also explained a little bit about the concept. In the next video I'll jump more immediate right into the exercise and do maybe one or two of the next steps in one video. But right now, first and very most, very, very basic first step. All right, let's check it out. So here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start by lying on our backs completely flat, legs extended and our arms extended over our heads. And then we're simply gonna roll from one side to the other. So from our backs to our bellies, back to our backs, back to our bellies and so on. The important thing here, there are many different variations of this exercise and uh, this is just one that I picked to start with. I'm going to discuss more variations in the coming videos, but this is just one to start with. Another very important part for this specific type of rolling is try not to hollow the body too much. Obviously, you can really hollow the body a lot in either direction in order to also control this movement. But what we want here is try to hollow as little as possible. A little bit of hollowing will be necessary, but that's what we are going to figure out right now. So let's get started. All right, lie on your back, arms over your head, and then just simply roll. Roll on your belly, roll on your back. Roll back on your belly to the other direction, and roll back on your belt, uh, back. Now this is how the movement should roughly look like. Normally I would suggest to roll two, three, four times in one direction, then turn to the other side. I don't have enough space here so that you can still see me on camera. Very important point here, don't start using the momentum. In terms of don't start lying down, start rolling, and then you just simply use that momentum and spin it forward literally try to roll and control, more or less. You can allow the body to roll over the edge once you turn, but really make sure not to sort of push it further and further and further so that you get faster with each rotation. Now, how is this working body mechanically? And the most important thing here and the reason why we extend the arms over our heads is because it's about polarities in this specific way of doing this exercise. It's about creating body axis. In this case, we can play with either unilateral body axis, so from my right arm down to my right leg, or diagonal body axis, so from my right arm, for instance, down to my left leg. What we want to do in this exercise is literally, in order to get rolling, you extend one arm up and you extend the other leg, for instance, down. So you literally, you create tension between two polarities, two polar points in your body, one, your arm very high up, the other your foot very low down, by defining a rotational axis in your body. This is the first thing that your body needs in order to be able to figure out which muscles to use to rotate around the defined body axis. And that's actually something, in this case, it's something very complex because we are talking about literally all the joints that lie between my hand and my foot. But the same principle of using body axis more than trying to tell muscles what to do, that same principle applies even if we work with one single joint. If you know about the body axis, your body knows which muscles to use. 
if you create functionally over more than one joint a clearly defined body axis your body automatically uses the muscles that it can most efficiently use to rotate around that rotational or around that defined rotational axis and that's the idea to learn in this very specific exercise and that's why I chose this way of doing it rather than leading with the eyes or hollowing the body much much more or pulling your legs in and then rolling to your to the other side of the pelvis and stuff like that all those are exercise variations that we can do but right now what I want from you is really define the polarities and learn to rotate around a rotational axis that you define through end points in your body all right so let's try that once again It's just simply playing with your body, with defining an, a rotational axis and then moving your body around. And the fun thing here is you can try different things. You can try unilateral, you can try diagonal, you can try using your right arm and your left foot and then turn to the left. You can try using your right arm and your left foot as polarities and turn to the right. And you'll see some of those things will work and some of those things won't work that well. And I, at this point, I do not want to present which ones work and which ones don't. Because this is taking out experience that you can make on your own. And here it's really about learning about axis and giving the body the training it needs at the most fundamental movement level in order to stabilize itself and to stabilize joints and movement in a functional way. This is also a couple of weeks ago someone asked me about swaying while walking. This for instance is one of those aspects because every single primal actually developmental movement that we make and learn in our movement development from babies to adults or to children who can run around already, every single step on that way is an important stabilizing and coordinational effort the body has to go through and has to learn. Now if we trigger those very basic principles again, because at some point we know they worked, otherwise you still wouldn't be walking. If we trigger those aspects again through such exercises, we literally dig away all the bad patterns that you learned over the course of your life. We dig away all the strange and distorted patterns that you might have learned through bad posture in front of the computer, through not using your body. But the body right now, it just takes this very, very complex pattern of walking and tries to make the best out of it based on its current experience. But if you once again go to the point before that and retrain the fundamental movement, then suddenly there is a new reference point and the body can start anew and can correct autocorrect actually the movement from the very foundation and going up into more complex patterns. Oh and one more one last thing here make sure at this point not to lead with any specific body part consciously. Obviously in this exercise you could lead with your foot, you could lead with your arm and let the rest of the body be pulled after that. That's a variation that we are going to talk about next time. For now, really make sure to stay as aligned as possible. Use those body axes 
and allow for that rotation. It's never a complete rotation, it's always a little bit of a spiral, but allow for that. All right, if you liked the video, make sure to like and share, and also subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date on more of those exercises and other methods to stabilize movement, to stabilize joints. There is also another series right now up there where I'll talk about emotions and how they affect our body, our movement and so on. So if you want to stay up to date, just hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions and comments, please leave them down below in the comment box. I'll hap I'm, I'm happy to answer all of them. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful day. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.